After Netflix's live-action remake of One Piece, I had a lot of faith going forward for the future of live-action adaptations, especially from Netflix. But the more I heard about this new Avatar The Last Airbender adaptation, the less faith I had in it, until I ultimately expected a disaster of a show. So I finally found the time to watch the first season of the new Avatar, and it is... Eh. To be honest, it wasn't as bad as I was expecting, and it was a pretty average show altogether with some good strengths, but very negative weaknesses, most of which are found in the show's script. Obviously, it's not as good as the original cartoon, but it's also not as bad as the 2010 film, so it's in that weird, mediocre middle spot. My name is Ong, and I'm the Avatar. If you wanted a compelling television show that leaves you in thoughts and connected with the characters, then I'm disappointed to say you won't find that here. This entire adaptation is a facade, like a Hollywood set house. On the outside, it's visually interesting and cool to look at, but on the inside, it's empty, depressing, and sad. Let's get the good out of the way first. Yeah, this show is very satisfying to look at, especially the CGI elemental bending. That alone carried the show. All the fight sequences were really creative and super fun to watch, and it was just cool to look at. And I appreciated the maturity behind the fight scenes, which translated well into live action. And the music only elevated the scenes, and I was surprised, and it gave more oomph to everything. Oh, and the costumes and set pieces were well done too, and were fairly accurate to the show. But with that being said, the wigs were not it. Almost all the characters wearing wigs or prosthetic hair were so horribly done, and it was so noticeable which took me out of the visual immersion. That and Grand Grand's dentures. Most of the casting was well done too. Most of them. Ignoring what the script did, the standouts were Aang, Zuko, Sokka, Suki, Iroh, and Ozai. I would have said Katara too, but she isn't given much to do and it feels like the show forgot about her. Anyway, Aang's actor brought likability to the character with some flaws, but you know, he's a kid. He had a lot of heart and charm and was fun to watch, but not the best acting. But the best was probably Sokka, along with Iroh and Zuko's dynamic. They were easily the best part about the show, and I honestly was more interested in their story than the gang's journey. The show further developed their relationship, and I appreciated that, along with the competent acting. But yeah, not every casting was a good one. Azula's casting was a misfire. She did okay with portraying the character, she just doesn't have that menacing look to her. I'm not really terrified by her presence when she's on screen like I was in the original show. The actress has a very friendly face, which is a great feature, but maybe not for Azula, the terrifying fire princess. Okay, now the real problem with the show is not with any of the actors or visuals, but lies much deeper. The original cartoon, made for children, had a lot of nuance and complex themes throughout the show. It treated the audience with respect and knew you could figure things out without them explicitly stating things. The original show had a lot of breathing room for development, but most importantly, it had time. The live action adaptation differs heavily as there's no time for anything and it completely ignores or rushes through all the fundamental storytellings that gave life to these characters. In this case, time ruined everything. The first takeaway from the show is no when and where to put certain scenes. Something that bothered me while watching the show was how angry everyone was towards Aang, that he had vanished. Particularly, the betrayal the Water Tribe felt when finding out Aang was the Avatar. Characters were furious with Aang that he was not there when the world needed him most. But I just couldn't connect or sympathize with their qualms, mainly because there was no mystery surrounding Aang's backstory. The show opens with Aang's history which subtly connects the viewer with Aang. So when outside characters attack him for his disappearance, it actually hurts the point they're making, because why would you side with this random character who you know nothing about when you've already seen the other side of the story? The original cartoon left Aang's backstory mysterious for a few episodes, so you learn as Katara and Sokka learn, connecting you with them more and are able to sympathize with the Water Tribe's betrayal, especially considering Aang intentionally had left that information out. So knowing when to put a scene in a story is crucial for the subtle feelings the audience will feel. The second takeaway is know what scenes are important for the story and what's not. Every scene in the story should be adding something to it. Whether it's advancing the characters closer to their end goal or to develop them further, the writers seem to ignore this important element of storytelling and seemingly forgot to include the most important scenes of all. The bonding between Aang, Katara, and Sokka. 
The cartoon succeeds again because you had time to resonate with the gang and could see them interact with each other more. The more time spent with the characters, the more they become a real family. The live action, unfortunately, is so rushed that you can't get attached to the trio's dynamic. All the scenes that built up their friendship happens off screen, so it doesn't feel earned when they refer to each other as a family or show so much emotion when saving each other. To be fair, the writers had to rush through so much lore and plot, but in doing so, they left the rest up to your imagination off screen. Also, the whole plotline with Jet could have been left out and used to further develop the characters' relationships because it really added nothing to the story. Sure, it helped mend the relationship between Sokka and Katara, but the characters didn't spend enough time with Jet for it to cause conflict in the first place. And if it happened off screen, then that's just lazy storytelling. Iroh and Zuko's relationship was well done more so than the others because we had time to see them interact in more than just Pursuit of the Avatar, but also in deeply emotional scenes. You could see how much they care for each other outside of just business. Iroh's new scenes were also great and helped develop his character more, and I actually kind of liked how Azula was introduced in the first season. And a more minor complaint, more scenes should have been included to give more depth to characters. Like characters complain that Aang doesn't want to take responsibility for being the Avatar, but everything he is shown to be doing contradicts that. He's so serious in his goals and doesn't goof around like before. It would have helped a lot more with the message the show is trying to convey. With great power comes great responsibility. But I won't go in too much on the changes this show made from the original cartoon, like Sokka's character arc, Bumi's different personality, or Zuko's Agni Kai scenes. For now, I'm just using the cartoon as an example of right storytelling, but feel free to talk about the changes below. But one thing I will say is they completely just didn't show Aang learning how to waterbend at all. So yeah, that's a pretty big one. Finally, the third takeaway is know how to write a compelling story before taking on a $112 million project. Oh my gosh, the worst part about the show is the lack of nuance and the pure expositional dialogue. The way characters interact with each other are awful and not something people would say to each other in real life. And the show spends too much time holding your hand explaining all the lore. Grand Grand is the biggest culprit of exposition and it is laughable how forced it is. Characters will also flat out tell you what they're thinking and feeling or what their goal is, so there's no nuance. For wanting to appeal to a mature audience, the show sure does treat you like a toddler. It's just crazy how much more thoughtful the cartoon was when it was made for children. Oh, and the show loves to beat you over the head with its messages and themes. Like, okay, we get it. Don't let others tell you what to be. You can be yourself, take responsibility, and have hope for the future. Characters just straight up repeat these things over and over again instead of letting you figure out what the true meaning of the story is. Also, minor complaint, but the show loves to constantly remind you that Aang is the Avatar. Like, okay, yes, I got that the first hundred times. You are the Avatar. Oh, and characters just appear out of nowhere and somehow run into each other despite not being close by. It is absurd how many times this happens, and once you notice this, you can't unsee it. The lack of smooth scene transitions is a clear sign of amateur writing. What makes the dialogue even worse is the stiff character blocking and the over-reliance on close-up shots during conversations. So many shots are just static, but that's more of a directorial and visual thing. Overall though, time was this show's downfall. I couldn't grasp how long they spent on this journey, nor could I connect with the characters because of that. Time really does kill a lot of these live action adaptations, like Disney's new Percy Jackson series. Netflix's Avatar needed at least four more episodes, but even then, I don't know if that could have fixed the problems with the story's writing. Not even time could fix that. One Piece's live action roughly had the same length as Avatar's runtime, and it did so much more with it. But most importantly, I don't get why it's live action. Nothing new or of significance is really added here. It's just another cash grab remake following the trend going on within Hollywood. As a remake, it's alright, and as a standalone show, it's painfully average. I recommend that if you want to watch Netflix's Avatar The Last Airbender, you'll get more for your time if you watch the original cartoon instead.